ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ರೀಗುರುಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ್ರೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣರಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾಂಶ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತರೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀ ನಮ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಣಿ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದಾನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆಯನ್ನು ಗೌರವಿಸಿ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಪ್ತಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಸಹಿತೆ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತುರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಜೇವಚ ಪತೀತ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರವಭಕ್ತಿ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಮುಖಂ ಕರ್ತಿ ವಾಚಾಳ ಮಂಗಂ ಮಂಗೇ ದೇಗಿರ ಯತ್ಕಪಾತ ಮಹಂ ಮಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ದಿನ ತಾರಣ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾಲೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯೇಶ್ವರ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಟೋಕಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಕೀಪ್ ದ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಲೋಡ್ ದ ಸೆಷನ್ ಓಕೆ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೈಭವ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಮೈ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಐ ಕೀಪ್ ಮೈ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಬಲ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈನ್ ಟು ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ uh video should be on and that's a criteria for attendance also as per the bhakti shastri protocols okay thank you so the coordinator can keep noting down that's one of the duties of the coordinator to and attendance so video is off then no attendance video is on then just attendance okay shriya mata ji can note it So last time we saw this verse 4 and 5, sorry, 3 and 4, yes, verse number 3, Asuriya Namate Iroka, Andhe Natham Sakrata, Tam Sthet Vrithyabhi Gachanti, Eke Shatma Hanojana. So we discussed in detail about Atmaha. Atmaha means killer of the soul. Killer of the soul in the sense that the soul degrades to lower species of life. He is not able to utilize his valuable human life for elevating his soul to spiritual world. So that's why he is called as Atmaha. So that is the main point. Importance of human form of life was mentioned there by Prabhupada. And next verse talked about Anecha Dekam Manaso Javiyo Nanya Deva Aptuman Dhuva Marsha Taddhava Tunya Natte Dhidhishthan Tasmin Napo Matarishva Dadati So, our Lord is situated in one place, but still, His influence is everywhere. Even the Devadas cannot approach Him. He is inaccessible even to the Devadas and He is, uh, yeah. The Supreme Lord is swifter than the mind and can overcome all others running. So, we saw that how Lord is not approachable by any material means, not even by the mind. Neither by karma yogis nor by jnanis, but Lord is accessible only by devotees. So that was one of the point of discussion in this shloka. Now, let's go to the fifth verse today. So, fifth verse talks about contradictions in the Lord. Of course, Lord has no contradictions. At the same time, He has contradictions. 
these contradictions can be seen at different levels. At, at a certain level, there appears to be contradiction. But when we approach the Lord from a higher level, the contradiction is resolved. Mm -hmm. So the Lord has contradictions. At the same time, all contradictions can be resolved in Him. So that is what this shloka talks about. So we'll read this verse number 5. Yeah, kindly repeat after me. Tad ejati tannejati Yeah, so now we can unmute and pull this out as well. Tad ejati tannejati Tad ejati tannejati Tad dure tad vantike Tad dure tad vantike Tadantarasya sarvasya, Tadantarasya sarvasya, Tadu sarvasya sya bahyataha, So here the word Tad indicates the Supreme Lord. Indirectly, there is an indirect address. Instead of saying Krishna, here it is saying He or That, the Supreme Lord. So the word Tad indicates Supreme Lord. Tad ejati na ejati. He walks but still doesn't walk. Tad dure tadu antike. He is far yet very near. Tad antarasya sarvasya. He is there within everything. And tadu sarvasya asya bahyata. He is outside as well. And the Supreme Lord walks and does not walk. He is far away but he is very near as well. He is within everything, yet he is outside of everything. So, the contradictions can be easily seen in this verse. So, this verse is, is the purpose to this verse can be separate, uh, can be categorized like this. Now, the paragraph one talks about the inconceivable nature of the Lord. The Lord is inconceivable. Although he is inconceivable, he is also conceivable. He can be understood to the degree Lord reveals to us. So that is the first paragraph. The Supreme Lord must be inconceivable. Achintya khaluve bhaga bhavaha. So achintya means Lord's nature is that he is ununderstandable. Achintya. If you can understand everything about the Lord, then he is not Lord. But if he is not accessible, then how to approach him? No, Lord is accessible, but, but he is accessible to the degree he reveals himself to us. So that is the inconceivable nature of the Lord. The second paragraph talks about how absolute truth is far, yet very near to us. So that is the second paragraph. So Krishna is there in Goloka Vrindavana. At the same time, he is there as Paramatma in our heart as well. Taddure, Taddvantike. So then signs of deity worship. Paragraph 3 to 6. So, although the Lord is not accessible to us, He becomes accessible in the form of Archa Vigraha. He can transform matter into spirit as well. If He is the supreme controller, then He can convert matter into spirit. So, the Lord converts matter like wood or stone or it can be metal by appearing in that and transforms it into spiritual. That's called Archa Vigraha. So that's paragraph 3, 4, and 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then Nirguna yet Saguna. Lord has no qualities, but at the same time, He has qualities. How is it? The seventh paragraph explains. Lord has no material qualities, but He has all spiritual qualities. Then paragraph 8 and 9 talk about how the Lord pervades everything, yet He is separate or aloof from everything. So, this is how the nine paragraphs in this purport are categorized. Okay. Yeah. Let's read the purport and I will talk about the important points in the purport. Yeah. Yes, who would like to read? Yes, I see first in our list is Abhishek Pru and Mataji. Text 5 translation. The Supreme Lord walks and does not walk. He is far away, but he is very near as well. 
he is within everything and again he is outside of everything one point here is an explanation of the supreme lord's transcendental activities by his inconceivable potencies there are two sets of contradictory words mentioned herein to prove the inconceivable potency of the lord he walks and he does not walk these two phrases are contradictory if someone can walk then it is improper to say that he cannot walk these contradictions show the inconceivable power of god with our limited fund of knowledge we cannot accommodate such things and therefore the lord is conceived in terms of our limited powers of understanding the impersonalist philosophers of the mayavada school accept only the impersonalist part of the lord's activities and refute his personal feature the bhagavata school however accepts the lord in both the ways that is as personal and impersonal and the bhagavatas also accept his inconceivable potencies without inconceivable potency there is no meaning to the words supreme lord okay can you show me the cover of your book yeah okay okay some wordings are different ah oh, is it yeah this is little older very hard to this white book huh? and is the meaning remains the same so um, the contradictions given here prove that prove the inconceivable potencies of the lord so contradiction see there are some things which we cannot understand by our material mind right is it chetan chandrastali that there are some things which can understand by logic and there are some statements which are illogical but there are some statements which are beyond logic so lord is beyond logic he is trans logical that's what prabhu was saying means he some you can establish the presence of the lord by logic but you cannot understand the activities of the lord by logic like for lord's leelas you cannot apply logic okay why did krishna steal water uh, you cannot give a logical answer to this past tense so he is trans logical he is beyond logic so that's why nat nat tat tarkamscha yojayet you cannot understand the supreme lord by tarka tarka means logic logic is required at certain places to establish some truth but when it comes to the nature of the lord his activities his qualities logic is beyond that right so lord is beyond logic so that's why his body is trans logical beyond logic he can be understood only by love bhava so that is the way to approach the lord not through logic so here on one level there can be contradiction but on another level this contradiction is defeated right so now he walks yet he doesn't walk now this is a contradiction here no the lord walks but he doesn't walk how to understand this so lord has no material senses but he has got all spiritual senses he doesn't have a hands and legs like ours but he has transcendental hands and legs our hands and legs have got certain properties certain nature some certain limitations but beyond uh, means our senses are material but lord senses are spiritual so that's lord's capacities are beyond material capacities like unlimited capacities so the no uh, and another quality of lord senses is they are interchangeable with one sense of the lord he can do multiple activities angani asya sakala indriya vritti manti like that so maya the philosophers they deny the personal form of the lord because they deny any material form they also think that the lord's form is also material and they reject the form of the lord which vaishnavas don't do the vaishnavas accept the form of the lord and they accept that the lord's form is transcendental spiritual so that's the essence of the first verse here first paragraph so prabhu in this book vishopanishad any given opportunity he will smash the mayavadis 
and this is one book which we can use to defeat the maya this because the personal aspect of the lord is mentioned here right as you will see when it when we come to the 15th verse it very clearly mentioned that lord has a form and devotee is praying to see the personal form of the lord hiranmayena patrena satyasya pihitam mukam tattvam poshana pavruno satya dharmaya drishtaye oh lord please remove your effulgence and give me your darshan Right. So, so Ishwarnishad was translated by Shri Prabhupada, particularly with this intention to establish the personality of the Lord. And even the verse number eight also indicates the personality of the Lord. Okay, we will go to the next paragraph. Yes, Sarsha Madhur can do. We should not take it for granted that because we cannot see God with our eyes, the Lord has no personal existence. Sri Ishopanishad refutes this argument by declaring that the Lord is far away but very near also. The abode of the Lord is beyond the material sky and we have no means to measure even this material sky. If the material sky extends so far, then what to speak of the spiritual sky which is altogether beyond it? That the spiritual sky is situated far, far away from the material universe is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 15.6. But yeah. despite the Lord's being so far away, he can at once, within less than a second, descend before us with a speed swifter than that of the mind or wind. He can also run so swiftly that no one can surpass him. This has already been described in the previous verse. Thank you. Mm. Yes. So the abode of the Lord is beyond metal sky and we have no means to measure it, even this metal sky. So something which is immeasurable and which is unseeable, how to put faith in that? And can anyone of you please tell that how can you put faith that spiritual world exists? How can you put faith that spiritual world exists? Mahajana yena gathasa pantha. Dharmasya tattvam nehitam guhayam. Mahajana yena gathasa pantha. We don't know, but we know and we put faith in those who have seen the truth. Okay. Thank you, Mother. And Shastra. And Shastra. Yeah. Has anybody gone to Arctic circle there? continent, Arctic or Antarctica. Nobody. What about America, Australia? Nobody is gone. But we have faith that that place exists. There is a continent called Antarctica. There is one called Arctic. So, we have how? We have we know people have gone there. We have gone, we know people who have gone, taken videos and photos and they are showing it to us in different channels. So, we have faith. Okay, such a I have not have gone there, but I know people who have gone there. So similarly, Shamamata is telling, yes, I may not be have, I not have seen the spiritual world, but I know people who have seen the spiritual world who are the uh, Mahajanas. They have access. Okay, so based on their words, we put faith, okay, spiritual world exists and it is like this, right? Ved, what is it? Chintamani, Prakarasadma, Sukalpa, Riksha, Laksha, Vritesh, Surabhi, Rabhipali, and things like this description of spiritual world is there. And Brahma is seeing this and is writing in Brahma Samhita. And even the Acharyas, like the Shadgu Samhita, they have written. So we put faith in them, in their literatures, and share faith in the spiritual world. Okay, any other answers? Any other thoughts? How can we put faith in the spiritual world? Okay. By some consequences, Prabhuji, like uh, <clears throat> we are questing for eternity. We want to live for eternity. We want the happiness, blissfulness. But these things are uh, not found here. So it should be somewhere. Uh, and that okay. is described as uh, like a spiritual world. It is in the spiritual world. So there okay. should be some word like that. Yeah. So the logical answer is giving here. So we can use logic to indicate something, to understand something, but uh, logic will not be able to explain the nature of the spiritual world. Like we are hankering for eternal happiness, we are hankering for eternity through happiness, but we are not able to find here. Like in the desert, 
the the animal is trying to find water, but he is not able to find water. Means water is somewhere else, but he is able to see only a mirage. Similarly, we are hankering for the true happiness, but we are not getting it here. Means it must be somewhere. And that is spiritual world. Okay. Thank you. Any other thoughts? How to put faith in the spiritual world which we can't see? Yet another thing Prabhupada writes here that even material world is difficult to understand. What to speak of spiritual world? The world which we are in, even this one planet where we are in, that is also difficult to understand. Right? Even there are certain phenomena in this material world like there is Bermuda Triangle phenomena. It is difficult to understand. Anything which goes there disappears. We don't know what is happening. It is said that the time flows fast there and then things break down very fast. Like that. But it is inconceivable. So even material world is also inconceivable. Keshava Tuva Jagata Vichitra. This material world is also Vichitra and difficult to understand. Or to speak of spiritual world. Even to understand material things, we need authorities whom we have faith in. Similarly, to accept the spiritual world, we should also put faith in some spiritual authority. Right. So <clears throat> this church shastra, just like um, if we want to know about um, America, we have to read about America from the um, authority or the American government would have released some uh, literature about America. And similarly, uh, Lord gives us readers. And one may question, how, how can we verify that? At least some parts of the Vedas are verifiable even for conditioned souls like, you know, astrology or Ayurveda. Uh, so some things are tangible. So we can put faith that, okay, the whole thing may also be. Okay. Uh, yeah. be true. yeah, yeah, nice. So you have some Vedas talk about some phenomena which are, we see that it is true, like Ayurveda, Yoga, and even there is some Vastu Shastra and other things, Jyotishya. We put, we have some faith in it. And same Vedas talk about spiritual world. So you extend logically, by logical extend, ex, uh, extension of faith. Yes, here we have, this portion is true. So this portion also should be true. Because same person who is writing about this, is also writing about the spiritual world. Right? So that's how we can have faith. In Bhagavad Gita, there are some things which you can very, very easily put faith on. But there are some statements which is difficult to put faith on. But same author is writing, same Krishna is speaking those statements. Yeah, you believe in it. Okay. And for example, now soul concepts, little easy to understand. Okay. The second chapter, okay, it's easy to understand. But there are some statements later on which come which are difficult to understand. Krishna says, no. Um, so it is beyond our experience. But still we put faith. Yes, this this shloka is true, so this is also true. So we should not be like Ardha Kukutinaya. Half and logic. Okay, take only half statements and reject the other half statements. So many people they do Ardha Kukutanaya. They accept one part and reject the other part. No, we should take the whole all shastras in eternity in completeness right we should accept everything as true that's called shastrika shaddha faith based on scriptures shastri shaddha okay so thank you for your uh, responses yes So, Taddure Tadvantike, Lord is very far, but He is very near also. Right? He is far, far away. Natad Bhasete Suryo, Nashashanko Napavaka, Yadgatva, Yadgatva, Taddhama Paramam, 15.6 talks about Taddhama Paramam Mama. But He is also very near, He is swifter, He can come very quickly from wherever He is. Right? And He can give His association to us. So, that is also. Uh, that indicates that he is near. He is very far, yet he is very near. Of course, another shloka also talks, 15.15 talks about Sarvasthichaham Hridisan Nivishtaha I am situated in everybody's heart. So, he is very near also. So, as Bhagavan, he is very far, but as Paramatma, he is very easily 
accessible. So the con contradiction can be resolved in this way. Tadure, tadu antike. It is far yet near. Okay, so we'll go to the next paragraph. That's the Kokila Mata we can read. Yet when the personality of Godhead comes before us, we neglect him. Such foolish negligence is condemned by the Lord in Bhagavad Gita 9.11. says that the foolish dared him, considering him a mortal being. He is not a mortal being, nor does he come before us with a body produce of material nature. There are many so-called scholars who contend that the Lord descended in the body made of matter such like an ordinary living being, not knowing his incon inconceivable power. Such foolish men place the Lord on an equal level with ordinary men. Yeah, so this is third paragraph. Because he is full of inconvincible <laughs> potential. Hare Krishna. Pause, pause, pause. So third paragraph, uh, till the sixth paragraph, it is talking about the deity form of the Lord, Arsha Vigraha. So he comes uh, before us in the form of a uh, deity and he remains inconceivable. Although he is inconceivable, he becomes conceivable in the form of duty. So, two things are there. When Lord comes as an avatara, he directly descends to this world. So, that avatara, he, he is, uh, Krishna says, no? he says, Sambhavami Atma Mayaya. He comes by his own internal potency. So, his form is not material. Although it may appear, appear to be like material form. But there is another way which by which the Lord comes, he is called as Archa Vigraha, where it is actually a material form. Uh, we take wood or stone and carve it, and then we give the presence of the Lord in that. But there what happens is that the elements get spiritualized. So that form itself is Krishna, it is non-different. So he can convert matter into spirit, that power he has. Right? So, actually from Krishna's point of view, there is no difference between matter and spirit. Everything is one energy. Right? But for us, it makes a difference. Like for example, electricity. Electricity is electricity. It's, but when it flows through a geyser, it heats the water. But when the same electricity flows through a refrigerator, it cools. Similarly, one Yoga Maya Shakti it maintains the devotees, nourishes them. The same Durga potency, it punishes the uh, miscreants, uh, rebellious souls, and tries to reform them. Both are Krishna's energies, but they work little differently. Effect is little different. That's all. So from Krishna's point of view, both are his energies. And from here also his energies. But one energy is being controlled by another energy. One energy influences other energy. Okay. But Krishna always remains the influencer of the energies. Okay. He is not coming under the influence of the energy. So Mayavad is making this philosophy, wrong philosophy, that Lord also comes under the influence of his energy. That's a mistake. The Supreme Brahman, when it comes under the influence of Maya Shakti, takes a material form. This is called Mayavad. So according to them, Maya is superior to Brahman. And this is a logical statement again, because if, by definition, God is somebody who is supreme. So how can something else be supreme than the Lord? So the Maya with this philosophy is illogical. And their philosophy is very difficult to understand because they use a lot of words regularly to prove this wrong philosophy. So that's why they have to beat around the bush so much to convince people of this philosophy. Right. But truth is very simple. We don't need very difficult statements, long, long statements to understand the truth. Very easy. So, Krishna's to Bhagavan's way. So, truth is very, very simple. Okay. But Maya, this philosophy is very complicated because 
Shankaracharya tried to prove something which is not true. So that's why it became very complicated. Yes. Next paragraph. Madhavi Madhavi. Okay. Because he is full of inconceivable potency, God can accept our service through any sort of medium. And he can convert his different potency according to his own will. Non-believer argue either that the Lord cannot incarnate himself at all or that he does he, he descend in a form of material energy. These arguments are nullified if we accept the existence of Lord's inconceivable potencies. Then we will understand that even if the Lord appears before us in the form of material energy, it is quite possible for him to convert this energy into spiritual energy. Since the source of the energies is one and the same. The energy can be utilized according to the will of their source. For example, the Lord can appear in the form of Arch Archabigra, a deity supposedly, supposedly, supposedly made of earth, stone or wood. Deity forms, although engraved from wood, stone or other matter, are not ideal. As the iconoclast Content. Content, yeah. Content. So in Iskhan, we don't use the word idol. Idol can be any murti, a dead murti. Uh, like any day we have no, they put Gandhi Kaputla, Ahmed Kaputla. They are all idols without life, lifeless forms. They are called as idols. But when you are referring to the Archa Vigraha, we call it as deity because it is living. Krishna is there. So, in temples, we call it as deities. And other things, we call it as idols. Idols are those, like in our temple, we have an elephant idol, a lion idol. There is no prana in that. There is not prana for Krishna. Then. But Krishna is deity. So we use the word deity to refer to Krishna. Yeah. There is a question here, if Mayavadi philosophy is wrong and it is easy to understand, Lord through Bhakti, why then Mayavadis do not try to try the path of Bhakti? Is it that Mayavadis don't want them or, and want them to be illusioned? Or they want to be holding to their philosophy out of ego? I don't understand this. Yeah, because they want to be God. And Mayavadi philosophy gives them the license to claim themselves to be God. Right. Uh, if you accept the Bhakti philosophy, then you are servant of God. So that's why Mayavad is the last layer of Maya. When everything fails to keep us in the mortal world, Mayavad uses the last weapon. You are God. <laughs> so the last snare of Maya is to make us believe that we are God. So Mayavad is, they will not go back to Godhead thinking that they are God. They will come back again to this metal world. They may go up to Brahman, but again come back. They will not be getting an entry into spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So, because they want, they have desire to be God. So, they accept this Maya philosophy. Maya vadam asat shastram prachannam bodham uchade mayava vihitam devi kalo brahmana rubina. So, Shankaracharya came by the order of Lord Krishna to propagate Maya vada in Kali Yuga. Kalo brahmana rubina. He comes as a Brahmana. And then he tells them, he tells the people that you are God. I am God, you are God, everything is God. Sarvam Khalam, Sarvam Khalidam Brahma, everything is Brahman. Aham Brahma Asmi. I am also Brahman. Everything is Brahman. So this philosophy was actually there are true statements in the Shastras, but it was misinterpreted by Shankaracharya. Uh, to make people believe that they are gods. But then it can be refuted very easily, this philosophy. Okay, if you are God, then why? How will you forget your God? How can God forget? God, forgetfulness in God, <laughs> it is inconceivable. So, the fact that we are forgetting that we are God means we are in Maya. 
ओके वी आर नॉट गॉड्स वी आर जीवस जीव कैन फर्गेट बट सुप्रीम लॉर्ड कैन नॉट फर्गेट बहुनी में व्यतीता जन्म नीत वजार्जुन तान्यहम वेद सर्वाणी नत्म वित्ता परंतु कृष्ण से दारी में एवरीथिंग विच हैपन इन मिलियंस ऑफ लाइफ टाइम्स बट यू फॉरगेट बिकॉज यू चेंज योर बॉडीज सो द जीवा हैज अ टेंडेंसी टू फॉरगेट गॉड डजंट हैव द टेंडेंसी टू फॉरगेट गॉड इज ऑलवेज गॉड करेक्ट सर इलॉजिकल फिलॉसफी बट शंकराचार्य यूज्ड वर्ड जगलरी टू एस्टैब्लिश दिस फिलॉसफी ओके it can be easily to be defeated if you read prakash anand sarasvati's discussion sarmatacharya's discussion lord chaitanya is very easily defeated hmm? this philosophy is hmm? next paragraph i am just choosing devotees who are having their video on yes sarad murishikesh guru and lavan patil <coughs> in our present state of imperfect material existence we cannot see the supreme lord due to imperfect vision yet those devotees who want to see him by means of material vision are favored by the lord who appears in a so called material form to accept his devotee's service one should not think that such devotees who are in the lowest stage of devotional service are worshiping an idol they are factually worshiping the lord who has agreed to appear before them in an approachable way nor is the archa form fashioned according to the whims of the worshipper this form is eternally existent with all paraphernalia this can actually be actually be felt by a sincere devotee but not by an atheist yeah this next paragraph from other jikan the bhagavad gita 411 the lord says that how he treats his devotee depends on the devotee's degree of surrender the lord reserves the right not to reveal himself to anyone and everyone but to show himself only to those souls who surrender unto him thus for the surrendered soul he is always within reach whereas for the unsurrendered soul he is far far away and cannot be approached yeah so these are the paragraphs that prabhupada is talking about uh, dt form and how it can be approached so first of all the dt form is not made according to the whims it is according to the shastra venam gunandam ravind dalayataksham barhavatam samasita amruta sundarangam kandarpa koti kamaniya vishesha shobham govindam adi purusham tamaham bajami so according to the description of devotees have seen the lord the deity is made not according to one's imagination so nowadays uh, oh sometimes we in kaliyuga so much of adharma is happening somebody keeps ganesha with a cricket bat somebody keeps ganesha with a, as a astronaut um, uh, it's too much their imagination <laughs> too much Uh, anyway, so Ganesh Chaturthi Day, no, they use this all DJ, DJ. I was in Gulbarga and they are celebrating Pasuri, and then they are putting on DJ and playing all Hollywood, Bollywood music. Boom, 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 ding, ding. And also, if 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 God comes and sees, he will think, hey, these are not my devotees. <laughs> these are somebody else. These are worshippers of Hollywood actors, not my actors. But they are keeping. Ganapati photo or whatever photos, and then they are simply dancing for Bollywood music. This is nonsense. And even on the day of Holi, instead of remembering Radha Krishna Lila, they are doing their own Lila. So tearing clothes and putting colors and DJ RJ. So this is not dharma, right? So anything which is according to shastra, that is dharma, but which is rejecting shastra's conclusions that is adharma shruti sha what is shruti smriti purana adi pancharatri ki vidhim vina aikanti ki harer bhakti utpata ev kalpate so it is mentioned that if any practice is not in line with shruti smriti and pancharatra shruti smriti purana adi pancharatri ki vidhim vina 
I can't think of Hari or Bhakti. Such kind of bhakti which is not authorized by these shastras, utpata eva kalpati, which will cause only disturbance. Similarly, deity worships also without properly following shastric injunctions will create only disturbance. So there are two ways of worshipping the Lord. One is Agama Shastra and is Pancharatra. See, Iskan follows Pancharatra Shastras. Okay. We follow Pancharatra Kadiri. Pancharatra is a scripture given by Lord Himself to Narada in five nights. We call Pancharatra. And uh, Narada Muni has written it down. In the form of Narada Panchatra. So, Lord is far yet very near. So, that's what we are discussing here. And even Archa form also, only when Lord reveals Himself, people can have faith in the Archa form. That's why sometimes the deities talk. They reciprocate with the devotees. So, can you share some examples of devote deities which are reciprocated? Deities are reciprocated quickly. Many, many are there. Yeah. Sakshi Gopal. Sakshi Gopal, yes. Yeah. Sakshi Gopal. He came all the way walking Kanchipuram. to you, Sakshi. Kanchipuram, Lord Vardaraja, speaks to Kanchipurana. And uh, any question devotees have, Lord will answer through Kanchipurana. So Vardaraja Swami speaks. Who else? Panduranga. Panduranga Vithala, yes. Uh, he came all the way and stood on the brick. Uh, and uh, that's the pastor we are referring to? Yes, yes. Hmm, yeah. And what is his name? Pundalik. Pundalik. Yeah. Lord Jagannath. Lord Jagannath. In which pastor? Actually, there are many pastors where he come, come to houses of his devotees at night and yeah. uh, some with the fruit vendors. Yeah. So many pastimes, sir, Jagannath Leelas are unlimited. He, he accepts offerings, he comes in the dreams. Sometimes he steals the fruit from the Jagannath Love Gardens in the night, uh, coming as a thief. So many pastimes are there. Yes. Radha Raman Ji, coming out of Salikram. Ah, Salikram Shila, Radha Raman. He became, Damodar Shila became Radha Raman. Alarnath. Alarnath, uh, in, in what past time? In that, uh, Madhu, he accepts um, from him the, the offering. Order is. Really accepts. Prabhuji, is gone Mayapur, the Nasimha temple. With the Panchagabhi Prabhuji at all the past times. And even with the devotees. Yeah, in the Nasimha Dev's book, huh? in Mayapur, the many reciprocations are there. Mayapur Nursing Dev is famous for giving instant reciprocation with his devotees. So there are many, many pastimes like this. And Udupi Krishna also reciprocated. I was hearing story Melipote Chalo Narayana Swami. Raman Chara went all the way to Delhi to get the deity of uh, Utsav Murthy. And Nawab said, there are many deities. I don't know which is the deity you are talking about. You pick up. And if the deity comes, you can take. So the Raman Shira went into the Godon searched and then actually the deity was being worshipped by his daughter, Vibha Nachiya. But then Raman Shira prayed, Oh Lord, please come. Then the deity jumped into his hand. He brought. But when he was bringing the deity, even the daughter wanted to come. Because she could not bear the separation from the deity. She also came all the way to Melkote. And when he was, she was here, then one day she entered into the deity and merged. So merged in the sense she entered the spiritual world by merging into the deity. So that happened. So Pratima Nahi Tumi Sakshat Brajendra Nandana. So the Lord is Sakshat Brajendra Nandana. Yes, he bent down in Keshav Gadadhar Pandit also. When he became old to put the Okay. Yeah, Tota Gopinath sat down. Yes. Also, Padrachala 
Rama deities, they went to Golconda to get Ramadas, Bhakt Ramadas released from the jail. Uh, Ramadas made the temple for him, right? Uh, yes. The Rama temple. Yes, sir. Yes, I heard of it. Yes, we'll continue with the next paragraph. Sumaki Shida Shri Radha Yes. Uh, in this connection, two words, the revealed script, two words, the revealed scriptures often apply to the Lord, Saguna with qualities and Nirguna without qualities are very important. The word Saguna does not imply that when the Lord appears with perceivable qualities, he must take on a material form and be subject to the laws of material nature. For him, there is no difference between the material and spiritual energies because he is the source of all energies. As the controller of all energies, he cannot at any time be under their influence as we are. The material energy works according to his direction. He can use that energy for his purposes without ever being influenced by any of the qualities of that energy. In this sense, he is nirguna, without qualities. Nor does the Lord become a formless entity at any time, for ultimately he is the eternal form, the primeval Lord. His impersonal aspect or Brahman effulgence is but the glow of his personal rays, just as the sun's rays are the glow of the sun god. Mm -hmm. So uh, the word nirguna is very simple, easy to understand. So he has no material qualities. For example, the so Lord created these three gunas, Satguna, Rachuguna, Tamaguna. And these three gunas are controlling all of us. We are called, um, what is it called? Uh, we are under the influence of gunas. But Krishna is guna dhisha. Right? He is. We are Maya Vash and Krishna is Maya Dhish. So that's the difference. He is a controller of Maya and we are subordinate to Maya. Maya is nothing but three modes of mutilation. Daivi, Hesha, Gunamai, Mamaya, Duratya. So Lord is not under the Guna means actually three modes. Satguna, Rajaguna, Tamaguna. Nirguna means he is not under the influence of three modes. He is beyond the influence of three modes. He is the master of the three modes. So there is one meaning of Nirguna. And uh, Saguna means he has got all the spiritual qualities. So that is the meaning of Saguna. Mm -hmm. So now Prabhupada talks about a story from Srimad Bhagavatam. How Lord is inside, Lord is outside, everywhere. So the last two lines of this shloka. Tadantarasya sarvasya, tadu sarvasya asya bahetaha. That will be explained. Till now, the first line and second line are explained. Tadejati tanejati taddure tadvantike. That is explained. The Lord is far, yet He is very near in the form of Paramatma and also in the form of Archa Vigraha. So now, Prabhupada is explaining how He is inside, outside, and is everywhere in the form of. Narsimha Deva. So the story of Narsimha Deva is very appropriate here. So Prahlad Maharaj's story is detailed, explained in detail by Prabhupada here. So one day, Hiranagashiva asked Prahlad, where is your Lord? And that is the question. Yes. Where is your Lord? So then Prahlad said everywhere. So then, uh, is he there in this pillar? Yes, he is there in that pillar. So then the Lord broke, uh, Hiranagashiva broke the pillar and the Lord appeared from that pillar. Yeah. Through his inconceivable powers, he can appear at any place in order to favor his sincere devotee. So he appeared in the form of the pillar, through the pillar to please his devotee. Okay. An atheist cannot order the Lord to appear, but the Lord will appear anywhere and everywhere to show mercy to his devotee. So that's the point. Right. Now, Lord did not appear to kill Hiranyakashipu. The Lord appeared to actually 
make the words of his devoted to Satyam vidhatum nijabhritya bhashitum. There's a verse in Shemad Bhagavatam which says, Satyam vidhatum nijabhritya bhashitum. To make the words of his devotee come true, the Lord appeared. The Lord doesn't appear to kill the demons. Paritrana sadhana vinasha chaturshitam dharma samtapunarthaya sambhami vivi. This is not the real reason for Lord's appearance. The real reason for Lord's appearance is to reciprocate with the devotees. To have pastimes with his devotees. That's where the Lord comes. So Hiranyakashipa also came to have pastime with Pallad Maharaj. To prove his words true. He came. And even to prove the words of Lord Brahma is true. He came. This is the main reason. Satyam vithatum neja bhritya bhashitam. Actually, it descends only to favor his devotees and not for any other purpose. The last line is very important. No, not for any other purpose. Even in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a verse which says that Anugrahaya Bhaktana Manusham Deha Masheta Bhajate Tadrashi Krida Yashrutva Tatparo Bhavet. There is a main reason for Lord's appearance. What is it? To do Krida with his devotees. Anugrahaya Bhaktana, to show mercy to his devotees and to do pastimes with his devotees, Lord comes. All other reasons are external. This is the main reason for Lord's coming. Yes, Sapna Madhuri can read this paragraph in Brahma Samhita. Hare Krishna, Krishna. In the Brahma Samhita 5.35, it is said that Govinda, the primeval Lord, enters everything by his plenary portion. He enters the universe as well as all the atoms of the universe. He is outside in his Virat form and he is within everything as Antaryami. As Antaryami, he witnesses everything that is going on and he awards us the results of our actions as karma phala. We ourselves may forget what we have done in previous lives, but because the Lord witnesses our actions, the results of our, our actions are always there and we have to undergo the reactions nonetheless. Yeah, so he is outside as Virata Rupa and he is inside as Antaryama. So, what is the 35th verse of Brahma Samhita? Yeah. 5.35. I think it's the verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andanta is the Paramana Chayanta is the Yeah. Ekofyasa Rajaitum Jagadanda Koti Yakchaktirasti Jagadanda Chaya Yadantaha Andantarasta Paramana Chayantarasta Go in the Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bhajani. I worship the personality of God at Govinda, who by one of his plenary portions enters into the existence of every universe and every particle of the atoms, and thus unlimitedly manifests his infinite energy all over the material creation. So, this verse refers to Paramatma inside the heart. Andantarasta. He is in Brahmanda. At the same time, he is Paramanu. Hmm? Andantarasta Paramanu. Shantarasta. So, he is there in everything. And Lord's presence in atoms make the atoms functional. Hmm? Right. How is it that the electrons are getting energy to rotate around the nucleus for eternity? On their powers, that's Krishna's energy. Krishna is only empowering it. So that is the all pervading nature of the Supreme Lord. Antaryami. The word Antaryami is very interesting. So Lord says that in two ways, Lord, uh, two ways Krishna guides us. Antaryami Bhakta Shrestha. Two ways. One is through Bhakta Shrestha, is a guru. So, Lord guides us as spiritual master from outside and inside he guides us as uh, Antaryami. 
परमात्मा तेषां सततान भजता प्रीतिपूर्वकं ददा बुद्धि योगं तम ये नमूयांत लॉर्ड इन दर्ट विल गिव अस डायरेक्शन टू अचीव हेम So actually, we should come in touch with the Supreme Lord. I was reading this book, very interesting book of Giriraj Maharaj, Dancing White Elephant. I'm carrying it with me wherever I go. Just read about hundred pages. So one day, one one Maharaj went and asked Prupad, uh, how to understand that the inspiration is coming from the Paramatma or it's coming from the mind. It was in Prabhupada in one of the lectures I was telling that we should connect to Paramatma and, and Paramatma reveals the plans. And I went and asked, Mara, Prabhupada, how to understand that it is the voice of Paramatma or the voice of the mind? And Prabhupada said, in the initial stage, you should follow the Guru. Whatever Guru says, you do it. Right? Because generally the voice of the mind only is prominent in the initial days. So one should follow the Bhakta Sreshta first. And by following the Bhakta Sreshta with Guru, eventually the heart becomes so pure that he is able to hear the directions of Paramatma also. Right? I was reading this fourth canto of Bhagavatam where Vaidharbi served Maledhaja. Maledhaja is husband as well as spiritual master. So she served husband so nicely, followed his instructions so nicely. At the end, she got the darshan of Paramatma also. In the form of Avignata, the unknown personality, he came and he said, I'm your friend. You have forgotten me. I'm, I'm your friend since decades, not decades, millions of lifetimes. I'm your friend. But you have forgotten me. In the past, you were consulting me, but you have forgotten me now. I have come here. And that is Paramatma. So we have forgotten Paramatma, although he is most dear person to us. So we should try to. Connect back to him. Okay. So that's Antaryami. Upendra had his hand. Uh, what is it? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. I had a question. Like, uh -huh. uh, you told Paramatma is within the atoms also, right? That's why it is making like it functions. So within all the like, like uh, non living things also, it is like Paramatma is there? Yes, yes. Paramatma is there everywhere. He is in, in the atom and within the atoms. There is no place where he is not there. That's what so how you are defining that uh, to be non-living things? Jiva is, not. Soul is not there. Okay. Jiva is not there. Yeah. And Jiva is not there. Right? And that's okay. everything is Lord's of energy only. Mm -hmm. Okay, everything is Lord's of energy and it's it's it is able to function because of Lord. But uh, Atma is not there. Hmm? The living entity is not there. Okay, so in that sense, it does not have some personal desire. So, hmm. Yeah, Paramatma is neutral. <laughs> hmm. Okay, fine. There are two more hands up. Abhishek Guru? So, Antaryami could understand, but what is a Virata form uh, when uh, Prabhupada writes he is outside in the Virata form? Is it in the form of, especially, I, I felt as if it is like Virata form is for uh, material uh, things like rocks or the non living things, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. No, Virata form is actually uh, here it refers to imaginary form of the Lord where he. Imagine the head as Satyaloka, his feet as the Bhuloka. In this way, we see the Supreme Lord all pervading uh, throughout this universe. So that is Virata form. Um, another way to understand also is Lord is outside in the form of Garbhodaksha Vishnu. He is inside as Kshirodaksha Vishnu. Okay. And Garbhodaksha Vishnu is the soul of the universe and Virata form is the body of the universe. So, the, the, the body of Garbhodaksha Vishnu is the Virata form. So, in that way, so the Lord is outside in the form of Garbhodaksha Vishnu or the Virata form and is inside us as Antaryami.
क्षमा माता टीज रह गई Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. Um, this is regarding the point uh, when you said, you know, in the atoms uh, there are no jivatma. Actually, I have. Uh, I just thought about this. There is this one shloka in the second chapter. Nitya sarvagata sthanu ho achalo yam sanatana ha. Sarvagata and Propad explains jivatmas are present everywhere. So, and I've also heard uh, Gopi Parandan Prabhu. explain this i mean not this shloka in another context he says paramatma is there in every atom and his only uh, his mission is to take the guide the souls back home back to godhead and that's why he's there with every jivatma and so he says actually in every atom also there is jivatma and that is why paramatma is sitting with him uh, so we can probably understand that uh, so those uh, jivatmas which are um, there in other atoms uh, which are part of the uh, inert material um, elements they are also jivatmas but they are so covered with ignorance that uh, they are they are not manifesting their living symptoms uh, if i am not mistaken somewhere in chaitanya charitamrita also i remember reading that i think in the conversation uh, mahaprabhu has either in chaitanya charitamrita or maybe hariyam sitam with haridas thakur i think he yeah, says yeah. right it is like they are all they are all jivatmas also like even in within the walls even within the uh, stones but uh, from what i understand it's probably like in a queue so they will also eventually they will uh, get more and more conscious till when they come uh, to uh, such a conscious state then they'll probably uh, take the take on the least conscious form of living entities mm -hmm. what is your take on this so yeah so i'll go to a verse from third canto of bhagavata where kapila dev talks about the gradation of uh, jivas okay let me try to find out that and it talks about different gradations of jiva starting from inert Actually, it begins by telling, not able to get the reference, and where the paragraph, Kotya. Very interesting section there. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Let me just see the subodhi. Actually, it starts with Jada and Chetana. Jada is actually the non-living beings, and there is Chetana, which is living beings. But in Chetana also, there are living entities without any sense perception. Yeah, this is chapter thirty-nine, verse number twenty-eight onwards. the gradation of jivas living entities are superior to inanimate objects so there are inanimate objects which are non living jivah jivah shreshtha hi ajivana so there are there is matter which has no life that's called ajivana so stones bricks metals some are ajiva there, there is no life in that now tatah prana vrutah shubhe tatah sa chittah pravarah tatah ch indriya vrutayah it says here 
Oh, living entities are separate inanimate objects. Oh, blessed mother. So, Kapil is selling to Mother Devavati. And among them, living entities who display life symptoms are better. Animals with deep developed consciousness are better than them. And better still are those who have developed sense perception. Now, here you will see. Yeah, the first division is made between dead stone-like matter and living organism. A living organism is sometimes manifested even in a stone. Not always, but sometimes manifested even in a stone. So we call, we call it as living stones. Experience shows that some hills and mountains grow. This is due to the presence of soul within that stone. Above that, the next manifestation of the living condition is the development of consciousness. And the next manifestation is the development of sense perception. So in this way it goes on and on. Next to eight shlokas talk about the gradation. Right. Right. Among living entities who have developed sense perception, those who have developed the sense of taste are better than those who have developed the sense of touch. Better than them are those who have developed the sense of smell. Better still are those who have developed the sense of hearing. So first is tasting, uh, touching, uh, yeah, touching, tasting, smelling, and hearing. Yeah. And then better than this are those who have seeing capacity. Rupa Bheda Vidas Tatra. Tatascha Ubhayato Tataha. And better than those who see are those who have got two sets of teeth. Tesham Bhopada Shrishta Chatushpadas Tato Dripat. And better than that are those who have many legs. Better than that are those who have four. Better than four legs are two-legged humans. Now the gradation of human starts. Tato Varnascha Chatvaraha. And among two-legged also, those who follow Varnashram are better. Tesham Brahman Uttamaha. Among them, Brahman is better. Brahmanesh Api Vedagnyo. In Brahmanas also, those who have read Vedas. Some may born in Brahman family, but they don't know Vedas. So those who have read Vedas, they are better. He arthagnyo abhyadikastata and those who know the artha, meaning of the Vedas, they are still better. Arthagnyat samshe chatta, one who can destroy others' doubts, he is better than one who just knows the meaning of the Vedas. Tata shriyan sva karma krit, one who follows the Vedas is better. And mukta sangas tato bhuyan, and those who are free from the material modes, they are better. Adogdha dharma matmanaha. He says, better than him is one who is liberated from the all material condemnation, and better than him is a pure devotee who executes devotion service without expectation of reward. So, the pure devotee is the best, he says. So, in this section, we see that how there is an animate, uh, uh, inanimate matter. And then there is animate matter, which appears to be dead matter, but there is Atma, just like living stones. So this is what I have heard and read in Prabhupada books. But regarding the point of every atom having Jiva, that I have not come across in any of the Prabhupada books as, as such. Okay, Mathesh. Like for example, for nursing this deity in Mayapur, they use a living stone. And traditionally, they used to find a living stone and carve it and then uh, establish the deity. Right. But my only thing is I'm not able to reconcile. Sarvagata. Sarvagata, they refer to the purport. Um, uh, Sarvagata sthanu rachalorim sanatana. The word it says Sarvagata means the souls are there in all conditions. Souls are there in earth. Souls are there in Chandra. Soul is there even in fire, in the sun. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, all places. There's a meaning Prupa gives there, Sarabhagata. In different, different So we think that oh, there's no life in fire. No, fire, life is there. There's life even in moon. There's life in other planets also. So, Sarvagata. Okay. There's a meaning Prabhupada gives there. Thank you. Yes. Okay.
हरे कृष्णा सो लास्ट पैराग्राफ ऑफ दिस उपेंद्र को क्या Yes, Am I audible? Yes. The fact is that there is nothing but God within and without. Everything is a manifestation of His different energies, like the here and the light emanating from a fire. And in this way, there is oneness among His diverse energies. Although there is oneness, however, the Lord is His personal form. Still enjoys unlimitedly all the pleasures enjoyed minutely by the tiny part and parcel living entities. So God is there. There is nothing but God within and without. He is there everywhere. Another way of understanding He is there everywhere is right. Maya tata vidam sarvam jagat avyaktam murti na. The Lord is present everywhere in the form of His energy, object, the Murti, Brahman. So He is pervading Maya Tatham Vidham Sarvam. Chagat Avyakta Murti Naha in my Brahman form. He is there everywhere. That's one way to understand. Okay, so we complete the verse number five now. So. We go to verse number six. Okay. If there is any question on verse number five, we can take it. The inconceivable nature of the Lord. So the nature of the Lord is that He is inconceivable, but He is conceivable uh, by His mercy. He becomes revealed to us in the form of Archa Vikara. Okay. And there, there are contradictions on the Lord. In the Lord, but if we see from the absolute point of view, then those contradictions are resolved. Okay. okay. So verse number six talks about a pure devotee. Is one question? Yes, bro. So in the various pastimes of the Lord, uh, is he actually? Uh, cognizant of his uh, position or he actually puts him because or is it both uh, because one of the questions in the remote past uh, if the Lord is actually you know exactly in that past time he is enjoying the mood and exchange of uh, Rasas with the devotees but uh, one of the answers what I had heard that time was you know, maybe he is putting himself under the control of Yukmai but uh, she is just the maybe the director but he's a script writer. So in he's that sense. Actor also. So she, <laughs> he's actor also. Uh, actor, yes. So he's he's being directed, but uh, he's the original script writer. In that sense, he's superior. So this uh, some bit of light. So the it. director is Yoga Maya. The actor is Krishna. So he gives the charge to Yoga Maya to direct his pastimes. And he acts and he takes the role, assumes the role as a child. Assumes the role as a lover, assumes the uh, role as whatever the uh, Leela needs, he takes that. So the Lord is, is always cognizant of his position, but for the sake of the Leela, he enters uh, into the pastime and he, he acts as if he is in that role. So again, inconceivable nature of the Lord. How we can... Sometimes when a person gets absorbed in a role, he forgets his actual position. Right? For example, the Prime Minister, yes, he is in the role of the Prime Minister, but when he comes to meet his mother at home, then he may forget the role for that moment when he is interacting with his mother. He will fall at his, her feet, okay, he will eat from her hand. He will act as, as if like a child. Once um, one person went to meet, I think it was a president of Prime Minister of uh, America or president of, president of America. And the person has kept waiting outside saying that, no, he's busy, he's busy. And long time passed, two, three hours passed and then this fellow was become a restless. So he just opened the door and tried to see what the Prime Minister is doing inside. And he saw that the Prime Minister had become a horse. 
and his grandson was riding on him. So, <laughs> oh, he is the Prime Minister, he knows he is the Prime Minister, but here he is absorbed in serving his, or playing with his grandson. Similarly, the Lord also uh, gets absorbed in that pastime. Although he is Supreme Lord, but he, uh, in that pastime, he forgets for the sake of Leela, he forgets his Godhood and assumes the role of him. Uh, the role suitable for that Leela. Yadya dhyat urugai vibhavyanti tattat bhapu pranese sadhanugrahaya. So, third canto Shad Bhagavatam, there is the verse. Yadya dhyati, dhyat urugai vibhavyanti tattat bhapu pranese sadhanugrahaya. Right, you know this verse? Very beautiful verse. Third bhakti yoga paribha vita harit saroja Ase shrutik shetapatho nanunata pumsa Yadyadhyat urugaya vibha vayanti Tatadvapu pranayase sadanubrahaya it says, My dear Lord, you, your devotees, oh my Lord, your devotees can see you through the ears by the process of bona fide hearing, and thus their heart becomes cleansed, and you take your seat there. Mm -hmm. You are so merciful to your devotees that you manifest yourself in a particular eternal form of transcendence in which they always think of you. Right? Prahlad Maharaj is thinking of Nursing Dev, he appeared as Nursing Dev. Mm -hmm. right? Yashoda Mata wanted a baby form, so he came as baby form and assumed that form an exact way to please his devotee. So in whatever way devotee wants to see, the Lord takes that particular form. It assumes that role to please his devotees. So that's what the shloka says. So the gopis had a different mood, so he came in a particular mood to please them. So in this way, Lord assumes different, different roles just to please his devotees. A best actor is one who enters into the role of the drama, assumes that role and acts. Then the feelings come out. Similarly, Krishna also is expert and actor. He assumes that role and hides his identity as a Supreme Lord. So this is what we can try to understand. Beyond this is inconceivable, so to explain. Yes, thank you. There is a question. Oh, who directs past tense for the Lord? Vrinda Devi or Maya Devi? Oh, it's Vrinda Devi, not Maya Devi. Okay, Vrinda, Vrinda Devi is also a an expansion of uh, Yoga Maya Shakti and she directs in the past times of the Lord. Hmm? Maya Devi directs our past times <laughs> in this material world. Uh, we are under her control. Hmm? She is the jailkeeper and we are the uh, we are in the jail. Hmm? Prabhu, isn't it is said even Purnamasi, she is also like the director. Who, what is the role of Purnamasi in contrast to Vranda Devi exactly? Actually, Vranda Devi is an expansion of Purnamasi. Uh, that's what I heard in one of the lectures of Bhakti Vijnan Maharaj. She is Yoga Maya, Purnamasi. And uh, for different roles, the Yoga Maya expands uh, for particular functions. And I can just clarify, I just heard somewhere. That Purnama Devi expands into different roles. Anybody has heard anything about this? Purnama Siddhi, 
Okay, I will try to get more uh, information on this. I had heard in some lecture, I will try to find out that lecture. Okay. Anyway, let's go to Mantra 6. Mantra 6 talks about a pure devotee. Okay, 6, 7, uh, these two shlokas talk about pure devotee. The vision of a pure devotee. So the paragraphs, one, two, one talks about Kanishtha Dikari, paragraph two talks about Madhya Madhikari, paragraph three talks about Uttam Madhikari. And then one is uh, Ekatvam Atmani, okay, one is, is described, one is of interest is described here uh, between the Lord and the devotee. Okay. We already discussed this topic in one sense in uh, Nectar of Instruction, Upanishad Bhattan. So, I may not go through the entire purport because Prabhupada almost speaks the same things. But the last part we will discuss. Okay. So, kindly repeat this verse. Yastu Sarvani Bhutani Yastu Sarvani Bhutani Atmanyeva Nupashyati Atmanyeva Nupashyati he who sees systematically everything in relation to the Supreme Lord and who sees all living entities as his part and parcels and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything never hates anything or any being. Yes, to Sarvani Bhutani. One who, yes, he who. Sarvani Bhutani Atmani. Evanupashati means Atmani here refers to the Supreme Lord. Anupashati means to see. Sarvani Bhutani Atmani Anupashati, one who sees every being in relation to the Supreme Lord. And Sarvabhute Shucha Atmanam. And in every living being, he sees the Supreme Lord. Okay. Sarvabhute Shucha Atmanam. Tatona Vijugupsate. Such a person never hates anyone or any being or anything. So that is the vision of a pure devotee. He sees Krishna in everything and he sees everything in Krishna. Or he sees everything in relation to Krishna. So that's the vision. So in Bhagavad Gita also similar verses come. So, this is a description of the Mahabhagavata, the, the great personality who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay. So, now we have discussed already the Kanishtha Dikari. So, can anybody say what is the quality of a Kanishtha Dikari? Who is a Kanishtha Dikari? Yes, sir. Faith in the deity. Ah. Uh, so he is God only in the deity and nowhere else. Okay. He is Kanishtha Dikari. Bhagavan Kaya Mandir Mehi. Right? But he's, he can't see God everywhere. So that is a Kanishtha mentality. That's, who, that's why he worshipped the Lord with great uh, respect and faith. But he cannot respect the devotees. He cannot respect other living entities. So that's the Kanishta Adhikari stage. 
So such devotees follow the routine formulas and sometimes quarrel among themselves. Sometimes Kanish Tadikar is also quarrel. Neo fight. Fight, fight, neo fight. <laughs> so that is uh, Kanish Tadikari. And they have some maternal tendencies also. They have uh, some expectation of return from their service. So they are Kanish Tadikaris. And what and Madhya Madhikari, Madhya Madhikari sees differentiation between different categories. Does anybody remember? How does a Madhya Madhikari see different people? Yes, Upendra. Uh, Prabhuji, for the deity, he considers to be the object of love. And uh, for the devotees, he considers them to be the friend. And to the innocent people, out of compassion, like he preaches them. And to the envious people, he tries to make distance from them. So, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. so this is how we discriminate between them. Or do anybody remember the verse? Prema Maitri Krupa Upeksh. Yeah. What is the first line? Ishore. Ishore that is Bhagavatam verse. Yeah, it's Bhagavatam verse. So Bhagavatam 11th canto talks about this. Ishwarita Dadine Shu Bali Shesha Research. Prima Maitri Krupa Paksha Yakaruti Samadhina. Right? And Kanishadikari is Arshaya Meva Hare. Arshaya Meva Hare. Shraddha Yi Hare. Natad Bhakti Su Chanya Shu. Sabhakta Prakrita Smradaham. Prakrita Bhakta. New of Hadi Bhakta. Right. So then, Uttam Adhikari, the topmost devotee, he sees Krishna everywhere. Sarabhute Suchatmanam, uh, Sarabhute Shihapashe Bhagavad Bhav Mahashirda. He sees every Jivatma as a devotee of Krishna. So that is Mahabhagavata Vision. So that same Mahabhagavata Vision is also being explained in sixth verse. So, Uttam Adhikari doesn't discriminate. He sees everybody equally. Vidya Vinaya Sampanne Brahmane Gavihastini Shuni Chaiva Shopake Pandita Samadarshina. So, Prabhupada quotes this in the paragraph 4. Yeah, paragraph 3. Third paragraph Prabhupada quotes. He sees everybody on equal platform. Brahmana. Uh, Cow eat, uh, sorry, a cow, a dog, a dog eater, a tree, or an elephant. So he sees everybody on the same platform as spirit souls. So such is the vision of a Mahabhagavata. Such a learned devotee is not misled by material bodies, but is attracted by the spiritual spark within them. Okay, so the vision of Mahabhagavata is he sees only spirit soul. We have this material covering, but he sees through the material covering. Right? Sometimes we see the material covering uh, and we make discrimination. Who is black? He is white? He is red? He is yellow? <laughs> he has black hair? He has white hair? He has red hair? We make so much discrimination and racism. All these things starts because of this color. And there is discrimination based on uh, gender. There is discrimination based on nationality. But a pure devotee is beyond all these platforms. He sees on the platform of soul. And only in that platform, real preaching can happen. So we are all devotees. So we also should not make any discrimination based on their color, nationality, gender, or any other discrimination because that will impede our preaching. So preaching happens when you see everybody as spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna, but now they have forgotten Krishna. Right. So we have to reconnect them back to Krishna. So that spiritual platform which Uttam Adhikari sees at. So we, we may not be at, we are not at Uttam Asti, that's sure, and I am not. But we should not be Kanishta also. Where we should be? At least we should come to the state of Madhyama, where we discriminate, okay, Krishna, the Bhaktas, Innocent people, envious people. Avoid envious people and preach to the innocent people. 
it is that is a very good platform for preaching and madhyam stage also a devotee has very good respect for other devotees so he doesn't commit offenses a kanishtha adhikari commits offenses to the devotees and there is a chance of falling down from that stage so one should try to come to at least madhyam stage and not be on the kanishtha stage okay We will read paragraph 5. Yes, from here. Who is not right till now? Of course, some devotees are still having the videos of um, actually as per well, protocol, we expect all devotees to keep the videos on. Yeah. Yes, Prabha Mataji is not ready. Prabha Mataji? Yes, Prabha. Hare Krishna. Now, please read this paragraph. It is clearly mentioned. It is clearly mentioned in the sixth mantra that one should observe or systematically see. This means that one must follow the previous acharyas, the perfected teachers. Anu, uh, Anupashyati. Anupashyati is the exact Sanskrit word used in this connection. Anu means to follow and Pashyati means to observe. Thus the word Anupashyati means that one should not see things as he does with the naked eye but should follow the previous acharyas. Due to material defects, the naked eye cannot see anything properly. One cannot see properly unless one has heard from a superior source and the highest source is the Vedic wisdom, which is spoken by the Lord himself. Vedic truths are coming in disciplic succession from the Lord to Brahma, from Brahma to Narada, from Narada to Vyasa, and from Vyasa to many of his disciples. Formerly, there was no need to... <coughs> Intel, uh, record. No need to record the message of the Vedas because people in earlier ages were more intelligent and had sharper memories. They could follow the instructions simply by hearing once from the mouth of a bona fide spiritual master. Yeah, so what Anupashyati is being explained here. Anupashyati means what? To see. To, anu means to follow, Pashyati means to see or observe. So we should observe through the Acharya's vision. Right? Anupashyati means to see what the Acharyas have seen. How they have seen, we should see accordingly. So that's called Anupashyati. So through the Acharya's commentaries, through the Prabhupada's purports, we can see Krishna. Uh, not directly. So that's called Anupashyati. Anugamana, to follow. Right. So, whatever your devotees have told, to follow that. And to Rupa Nuga, we are all Rupa Nugas. So, we follow Srila Rupa Goswami. So, we we also see Krishna accordingly. We also hear Krishna's pastimes, right? According to what the Acharyas are revealed to us. So, here seeing means through the years. Surta Ikshita Pataha. Previously, we read Bhagavatam verse, right? Tam Bhakti Yoga Paribhag Lakrit Saroja Atse Shruta Ikshita Pataha Nananata Kumsa. So we see through the years by hearing from the devotees, we can see Krishna. So that's the part. Shruta Ikshita Pataha. So Narada, so Brahmadi saw. And Narada heard from Brahma. And then Narada saw and he told to Vyasa. And the Vyasa they saw and he told his disciples. In this way, these teachings are coming down to the Guru Parampara. Start raining. Sorry. Is my voice audible? Yes, yes sir. Okay. It's good. There's a great relief because of rain. Temperature has cooled down. Yeah. 
Similarly, by hearing Krishna Gata, the rain of Krishna Gata, the heat in the heart, the mental sufferings in the heart, tapatraya, tapa means also heat, tapatraya will be destroyed by hearing Krishna Gata. Okay. So, in the previous ages, they could hear once and remember throughout their life. The next paragraph. Who wants to read it? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can I read? Okay, my question. But your video is off. You can on the minutes. Oh, okay, Prabhuji. At present, there are many uh, commentaries on the revealed scriptures, but most of them are not in the line of disciplic succession, coming from Srila Vyasadeva, who originally compiled the Vedic wisdom. The final, most perfect and sublime work by Srila Vyasadeva is Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. There is also the Bhagavad Gita, which was spoken by the Lord himself and recorded by Vyasadeva. There, uh, these are the most important revealed scriptures and any commentary uh, that contradicts the principles of the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam is unauthorized. There is a complete agreement among the Upanishads, Vedanta Sutra, Vedas, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And no one should try to reach any conclusion about the Vedas without receiving instructions from members of Vyasadeva, Vyasadeva's disciplic succession who believe in the personality of Godhead and his diverse energies as they are uh, explained in Sri Ishopanishad. Yeah. So, final conclusions is actually Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Srila Bhagavatam is a final commentary of uh, Vasudeva, the last book written by Srila Vasudeva. So, that's why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted Srila Bhagavatam as the ultimate Praman. So, there are different, uh, pe different people accept different Pramanas, but ultimate Pramana is Srila Bhagavatam. If anything is there in Srila Bhagavatam, we accept it. If something is not there in Srila Bhagavatam, we don't accept it. And if there are, suppose there are contradictions between Puranas and the Vedas, so, which version we should accept? That which is given in Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? So, that is the ultimate Pramana. Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Namadam. Uh, so, there is a verse in Srimad uh, Lord Chaitanya says no, there are five things. Aradya Bhagavan Parajesha Tanaya Tadhama Prindavanam Ramya Kachutu Upasana Vrajavadu Varginava Talpita Srimad Bhagavatam Puranam Amalam Yad uh, Pramanam Amalam. He says, and then Prema Kumartha Mahan. And ultimately, is Prema, the ultimate uh, goal of life. And Sri Chaitanya Mahapurva Matamidam Tatradhara Nagara. So, this is the verdict of Sri Chaitanya Mahapurva. So, these are the five things we accept. And uh, that's why Lord Chaitanya emphasized so much on reading and understanding. Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Lord Chaitanya used to go to Gadadhar Pandita and hear Bhagavatam for hours together. And past times, uh, he used to listen to Vipalad Maharaj, Dhrubh Maharaj. And from uh, Sarugdhanda Goswami and other, he used to hear Gopi Gita and other things. And, uh, and he, used, he also used to read the writings of uh, Jayadeva Goswami, Gita Govinda. We used to also listen to Vilanavar Thakurus, Krishna, Karanamrita. We also used to uh, read or relish the Kalidas books. So, in this way, uh, he absorbed himself. Right? This is called Anupashati, hearing the bona fide commentaries by the Acharyas, not by any other person. Right? When uh, somebody wrote a commentary and brought, I think it was. Gopinath Acharya's brother, she wrote a commentary and brought it. And then Lord heard it. He was very angry. How can you write a commentary like this? So Lord is not very happy with that. I can disapprove. 
even Vallava Bhatta, he also wrote a commentary. And he said that my commentary is better, better than Sridhar Swami. This upset the Lord very much. He said, if somebody doesn't accept Sridhar Swami, then he's a prostitute. Very strongly he condemned. Uh, then Allah Bhatta has to return that. Then he edited his commentary and wrote a newer version and not accepted. So, this one will follow the authorities. Okay, so the last paragraph is Arunambara Guru. According to the Bhagavad Gita, 18, 1854, only one who is already on the liberated platform, Brahma, Brahma Buddha, is B4 30 20, can become a Uttama Adhikari, devotee, Uttama Adhikari devotee, and see every living being as his own brother. This vision cannot be cannot be had by politicians who are always after some material gain. One who imitates the symptoms of an Uttama Adhikari may serve another's outward body for the purpose of the fame or material reward, but he does not serve the spirit soul. Such an imitator can have no information of spiritual world. The Uttama Adhikari sees the spirit soul within the material body and serves him as a spirit. Thus, the material aspect is automatically served. BT. Yeah. So politics is based on uh, is a different vision actually. You know, politics it makes discrimination between friend and enemy. And nowadays you can relate to very nice because elections going on. Okay, he is my friend, he is my enemy. If he is joining my party, he is friend. But if he is joining other party, he is my enemy. And whole election process goes on uh, voting. It's based on this only. Okay, he is the enemy, don't vote for him. He is my friend, vote for him. This is what is the campaigning. And these people, they support me, so they are my friends. These people, they are opposing to uh, me, so they are enemies. So, a lot of division or divide and rule happens in politics. But actually, devotee is beyond this politics. Uttamadikari doesn't make any politics. He is uh, broad-minded. Even the opposing party is also our party only. If, it, if somebody is envious of a devotee, the devotee doesn't envy him. And that he prays for him. Oh, let him overcome this envy and become a friend of man. Like Pallad Maharaj. In school, they were teaching Pallad Maharaj all this Kutaniti and uh, friend and enemy such kind of subjects they were teaching, but Palad Maharaj is not at all interested in these topics because he was interested in Krishna Kata. So, and he was a Uttam Adhikari. So, even in the Asuric friends, he saw goodness. He saw that spirit cause for, and he tried to preach to them. Right? So, even to the Rakshasa's children, he is preaching. And even his father, who is a demon, to him also, Prahlad is preaching about Hitvatma Padam, Grihamanda Kupam, Manam Gadoe, Dharima Seda. Please go and take shelter of Hari in the forest. So, this is Uttamadikari. Even to an enemy, of course, here Renagashpu was his father, but an enemy of Prahlad. But Prahlad Mahar is always wishing good. Oh Lord, please surrender to Vishnu, you will also be happy. So, this is how pure devotees, without discrimination, they want to give. Krishna consciousness to others. In a recent today morning, somebody is giving an offering that somebody hurt or uh, beat uh, his village of Gopal Krishna Maharaj in the, in, I think in the airport. And the devotees were angry, they caught him, handed him to the police, and he was put in jail. And after two days, Maharaj called his assistant and said, Can you go and release that person from the jail? So this Uttamadikari vision that how even people who hurt him, he is thinking good of them and wants to see them that they are happy. Because Nara is not very happy seeing him in the jail. He wanted him to be released. Right? 
So this Uttamadhikari vision. Aridas Thakur, people, the two people were beating him in 22 marketplaces. But he was praying, oh Lord, please forgive them. Don't hurt them, don't kill them. So this is the nature of a pure devotee, that he doesn't want to hurt anyone. Paradukha Dukhi. Seeing others distress, he feels distress. Similarly, Yudhishthira Maharaj, when Gandharvas and Gandharvas kidnapped uh, with Duryodhana in the forest, Yudhishthira said, hey, no, brother, we should go and save him. But Bhima was very happy, wonderful, that uh, Duryodhana is so envious, he is troubling us so much. They have kidnapped, so very good. But Yudhishthira said, no, 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 we should not save him. He is one of our family members, go and save him. So Yudhishthira Maharaj had no envy in his heart. He saw Duryodhana equally as his own friend. But Duryodhana considered, considered Yudhishthira as his enemy. That is his problem. But similarly, devotees also should develop this broad vision and try to appreciate other devotees. And some people think, my temple is the best temple. We should not go to any other temple. The other temples are better. <laughs> so why not? You can go, you can learn, you can get inspired and serve. And some there are some preachers who say you should attend my classes only, don't listen to any other class. Yes. So they have this mentality. I said, why not? Other speak, other preachers are also wonderful. They have read and uh, practiced proper those. So they can also explain from the different angles of vision this philosophy, and people can get more nourished. Right. So that division mentality is also there. And sometimes counselors say. You should hear my classes only. Don't go to any other counselors. So that is like choking the people. So here we are not appreciating other devotees. Mm -hmm. We think that I am the best. So this is the mentality which may creep in. Even in the devotee circle, this temple, that temple, this area, my area, your area, uh, so all these things. Of course, for managing purposes, we should have some boundaries, some rules. But we should have this broad vision that we are all one family. Right. Sometimes guru groupism also comes up with this guru's group, this this temple is this guru's, this temple is this other guru's. No, it's all proper temple. We should not allow this mentality to creep in because that will again divide the society. So we should have this uh, broad vision to see that everything is still a proper temple, everything belongs to proper, and we are all just instruments. And the hand of Shri Prabhupada to serve. So there's a consciousness we should develop. So this one in Gopal Krishna's wrote a where he said that I possess nothing, everything is Shri Prabhupada's. <laughs> and only this Rolex watch I got from Prabhupada, it's my I keep it as a gift from Prabhupada. That's the only property I have. And everything else, even if my disciples have kept something for me, so that's all this one. It should be given to this one, and this one can utilize it as per its need or discretion. So in this way, we should develop this consciousness of proper centeredness. Then you will see that everything, the ISKCON society will go very smoothly without any major problems, setbacks. So it will be welcome to Atma. Hare Krishna. So this is Uttam Adhikari vision. So of course, we should aspire to come to this stage. We may not be here at that stage, that stage right now. We should aspire and come to that stage. Okay. Are there any queries on this topic? So could we go to verse 5 and 6? So next time verse 7, 8, we will go. Then next session will be 9, 10, 11. The next session will be 12, 13, 14. So, the set of three verses from the Vidya, Avidya, and Samhuti, and Vinash. So, let us see. We will chat question. I heard Shidhar Swami was from Mayavar Samhuti and still Shidhar Swami was actually pretty strong at this point. Actually, he was staying in Varanasi and he is a Vaishnava. He is a Vaishnava. Uh, his commentaries are all Vaishnava commentaries. And very nicely he has explained the commentaries. So, of course, at that time there were more Mayavadis. And to 
इंस्पायर मायावादीज ऑल्सो टू रीड श्रीमद भागवतम कमेंट्रीज ही रोड सर्टन थिंग्स विच मे अपियर टू बी लाइक मायावाद बट इट्स नॉट ओके इट्स प्रॉपर प्योर वैष्णव फिलोसफी फैक्ट दैट लॉर्ड चैतना एक्सेप्टेड इट मीन्स इट इज प्योर वैष्णव फिलोसफी एंड श्रीधर स्वामी द फर्स्ट कमेंटेटर ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम इज द फर्स्ट कमेंटेटर ऑन श्रीमद भागवतम सो he is actually a vaishna but because of the circumstance he was in in uh, varanasi mm -hmm. where everybody is a mayavadi to make the commentary more relevant to them also so that is they can get started reading so initial part of the commentary so i have heard i am not going into details of it but i have heard that he has put certain statements which mayavadis can also appreciate so they get interest to read the whole commentary in that way. so his samadhi is in uh, near balasor near remona last year i got a chance about the rishitesh to my harish guru we got a chance to visit there near balasor uh, near uh, remona shikhar swam is birthless is there near remona so it is a vishnu site Okay. So, fine. So, Krishna, so we'll meet again next week. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Shwami Shanti Ki Jai. Pancha Guru Guru Shri Prabhu Sri Shri Dana Bhavan. Thank you.